tonight on the Living Legends segment is the barefoot running athletic sensation and peace ambassador Tegla Lorupe. She was the first African woman to hold the women's world marathon record. A dazzling athletic career that made us Kenyans proud. Wow, you know, I, I don't have the words to describe you because I've been such a big fan of yours right from those days of 1990 onwards and sharing the same space with a true living legend. My God, Tegla Lurupe, we are extremely honored to have you here with us tonight. Now let's go back, let's just rewind and how it all began. Tell us. Thank you very much because you told me that you went to England where uh, fair fitted and you did not have time to, to come back. And then you are, you are waiting for me now. Yeah, I, came to I bring went it. barefoot to the UK. Yes. Uh, I rushed there. And the only thing that could have got me back was you on a piggyback barefoot because I couldn't, couldn't but, do it anymore. Yes, but today <laughs> you made it. And thank you so much. I started also with no shoes. Yes. Like you ran, running to US, <laughs> you UK, sorry. Right. <laughs> I ran to school. And that's, to school. That, that's how my journey started. The barefoot well, running sensation all over <laughs> Kenya and how you broke all, all the social barriers. norms and all the barriers you know what to put yourself on the world stage of athletics. I come from West Pokot and therefore I had to run to school just 10 kilometers and uh, since we did not have any uh, buses or no bike and there was no shoes so what is there? It's you and your feet. And of course, because we always walk around without the uh, shoes, we get used. And running to school, it was okay for me because I was running with boys. And of course, why I was competing with boys is that every time our, our fathers or let's say our parents, they always talk good about boys. That, oh, it's my son, he's doing this. I say, what kind of these sons? I'm also your daughter and I want to prove them wrong. That's, I did not know that at one point I will, I will be one of the best in the world in running. So it started all fighting with the boys. And of course going to school now, in schools we used to play football and, uh, and run in cross country. And the teachers realized that this one who is always in the mix of boys, she can be a good, uh, a good athlete. You made your debut in 1989 at the World Cross Country Championships and you won two world championships in the 10,000 meters in 1995 and 1999. You made your name in road running and uh, of course won three world half marathon championships yes. in a row, 1997, 1998, 1999. And I'll just expound a little further so that you can give me the whole, whole background. The, whole the first African woman to win the New York Marathon in 1994 and retaining the title in 1995. Won the Berlin and London marathons too. Wow. <laughs> uh, why I came to run marathon is something that I wanted to open their doors, uh, especially for myself. I had a lot of fight with the federation because when they realized I come from, I came from Westbogo, they say this one cannot uh, represent the country. So I missed the cross country in 1994 in um, in Hungary. Mm -hmm. So I came home complaining and I wanted to run for for Uganda. Mm -hmm. The reason is that um, I did not want to run for uh, overseas countries, but I wanted to run for another African country. Mm -hmm. And I say because my own country doesn't like me, and I've, I've struggled with a small car come from West Bokot, where there is a lot of conflicts, and now they put me in their mix. So I'm going to Uganda. So wow, that's a very interesting perspective. Yes, and then President Moy, when I came home, because I was in the news all over, because I was I was doing everything. I was winning all the races in Europe. Whatever mm -hmm. comes in my face, I win. So Moy told me that I will not go to Uganda. Please, I know you are pride for Africa. And yeah, this is your home. He realized you run for us. Yes, he realized I have a pride for the for the continent. Mm -hmm. I could have ran in Germany because I would, I was training in Germany. Mm -hmm. I could have gone to other countries like the UK or or uh, Italy because I had I had already um, people asking me to run for their country. Yes, but that's I say, happening too often now. Yes, I say money is not everything. Was never your criteria. No, no, no. But I say I want to see that a community called Bogot, somebody comes from there that will shake the, the the country and shake the whole world because they always talk bad about women in from Africa. So I told Moy, okay, if I don't go to Uganda now, I'm going. No, I'm not going to Commonwealth, but I want to run the work. 
and I'm sure I will win. And then he told me go with my blessings, but don't go to Uganda. <laughs> so I came to New York, and they say it, she will not make it, she will not win, because she's at 10,000 meters. As I told you, I will always challenge people when they told me I will not be, I'm not able to do it, but I'll say I will prove you wrong. So I ran New York. That's a very strong mind and a very, and a very determined character. And you know the worst thing, eh? we were during the um, media, uh, we had interview, and they asked, where is this small girl come from, West Bogot? And uh, we know Bogot are thieves. It's almost like hurting my heart. I say, okay, yes, tomorrow I will steal. Mm. And they was like, yeah. say, I say, are you a dummy? I say, I will steal the money, of which I won New York, and of course I got the money. And it opened the doors for not only uh, my community, for the, but for the country and for African women yes. as a whole. And for any other woman who struggle in this world. The first African woman to hold the women's marathon world record and the first ever woman to run under 2 hours 21 minutes. That was 2 hours 20 minutes 47 seconds yes. on April 19, 1998 in, in Rotterdam, Rotterdam Marathon, followed by 2 hours 20 minutes 43 seconds in Berlin on September 26, 1999. Wow. 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 And you want to uh, say... I, I'm actually <laughs> spellbound. How, how did you achieve these miracles? It was oh. amazing. I, I wanted, uh, one thing I wanted to open the doors for African women. And when I ran New York twice, I won. The last, the last race, when I ran, my sister just passed like three, day, three days before the competition. But I still, I still went to New York and then I... Oh, your sister yeah, yeah, passed yeah. away? Yes. Three days before the yes, competition? Yes, I was on my way to New York. Just shows how much resilience you have, how strong a character. Yeah, and then I, I ran with... Despite all that grief in you. Yes. I'm sure it must have been very difficult it, deep inside it emotionally. Was, it was very difficult because I um there was a, there was a, this homeless person was he, I was running in New York uh, Central Park and uh, I was waiting to cross a red line. And then this man opened the, the, the blankets and then he looked and said, wow, my God, this is Tegla Lorube, this is homeless. And my colleague ran away, but I stood and looked. And then he told me, uh, I know your sister died, but run with courage. This is homeless man. It, it gave me a lot of courage. I said, tomorrow I'll run with courage, of which I won. And uh, Ingrid Christianity of Norway came to me, said Tegla, with heavy heart and you won you will be the first person to break my record i say ingrid 227 and you have 221 this is big but in my heart i said okay i'll do it so i came to rotterdam and i asked the race organizer i want to run your race and then of course he was happy because he didn't pay much for women 97 i ran and i ran Two hours twenty one zero seven, mm -hmm. and then I say, okay, I miss by one 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 minute one second. So ninety eight when I say I will do it, and of which I did it. And then there was also controversy about my world record. I ran with the men. You started the Tegla Larupe Foundation, which was actually started in West Pokot. You actually went back to your community, mm -hmm. give back to them. Yes, I went back to my community. The reason why is that I was trained in Europe and every time when there is issues, they always ask me to go and give charity, but I never ask for money. But every time I, I, I talk to people, they listen to me. I was in the Casablanca and the, the day before, the day after, there was a bomb blast. And I was asked to go to Indonesia, of which most countries refuse to take their athlete. But for me, I say, you know what, we have problem in, in our area. Mm -hmm. I will, if, I, if my going to Indonesia will help, make a difference, and then I will come. Of course, I had to ask my embassy. So my, my back of my mind, I say, no, my people are suffering. Conflict among the community. I lost relative myself. And also, we lost animals to Uganda. And then I told myself, I think I have to go and make a peace race in our area so that I can unite our people, but together the government. But I do not know how. I asked Noel of Morocco because I was supporting her. Please, I will need your help because I want to do something in my home. I came to AK, Kenya Federation Athletics, 
I asked them, I want to have a peace race in West Bogot. I said, ha, West Bogot, who want to go there? I said, listen, it's sports that bring people together. And is it now that difficult for you? For the last 13 years, I've been running for this nation in a high level. I come from that area. But it's the time for me now to see that my people stay in peace and there will be many tecklers that have been killed because of these conflicts. So I need your help. They refuse. I ran from Kanye Federation office to Parliament. That's how I, wow. I, I left my car. I, I was mad. I say, before they closed the Parliament, mm -hmm. I ran reading Parliament. Of course, the police know me. <laughs> they say, what's wrong with you today? I say, I want to go inside. So they open. Then the parliamentary came there. And then Raila was there. Raila was, Raila was our family friend. Mm -hmm. I was looking for Moroto, our area MB. Right. I was looking for Ekwe Turo, that's for Yuka, uh, Turkana. Mm -hmm. And I was looking for Lena Limo, that's for Marquette. Because uh -huh. these are the community fight. Right. And we should have Moroto uh, position. So I told them about what I want to do. And because they've been knowing what happened in Casablanca, they were kind of like, Tegla. it was anything wrong. I said, no, the, the criminals were there, but they did not want to kill the, the, the women who were running. So it seems that sports bring sport together, but I need your help. I need a race in West of Court for women to bring peace. What they told me that I remember it was Raila who told me, Tegla, women are not a problem, but men. But for me, I know that where the responsible is, women also as custodian of weapons, or sometimes they also encourage their, their husbands or, or their sons. You also lead the first ever refugee Olympic team. Uh, was, was rather was picked to lead the first refugee yeah. Olympic team and was chef de mission in 2016 and 2020. Uh, this is actually amazing and uh, it's global and it's it's a very big honor. Ah, thank you very much. I know many people think that Tegla was given an opportunity to just take refugees to Rio. I've been training with this uh, athlete when I was athlete myself. Mm -hmm. As a, as, a, as a refugee that stay in our community. So when I go out, you come back, you find that kids there. For me, I say it was not a wish for, the, for them to be refugees. I wish I could help this athlete. At one time, I told Dr. Dr. Thomas Park because I was training in Germany, so I knew him as a friend. I said, why is it that they are not Olympics for refugees? This is I never stopped talking never stop fighting for others and then he told me that um, it is hard but when I became when I become the president of IOC because I'm now fine I will make sure that the, the, the flight of the refugees can be hard and I will make sure that the refugees will will compete but by then I had some refugees also uh, staying in my with me in my house. Wow. I, in, we, have, we had a heart to call. You have uh, a very big heart. We had a heart to call, uh, call Karko. They were actually staying at your house as well, the refugees. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. By then we were training together and then they were training with my brothers. These are the boys. So, um, Dr. Thomas Park, of course, became the president and he went to United Nations to announce that I want to help refugees to run in Olympics. And he came to Kenya and he told me that I know that you have refugees and um, I want to support you. So, come to um, to Lausanne. So I went to Lausanne, and then from Lausanne, we went to organize a race in Kakuma together with Ra Raouf. He was a director of a refugee in Africa. So that's how we selected the athletes, uh, uh, local and the refugees. Finally, a message to the Kenyans in terms of what would you like them to do in terms of peace and tranquility in this country? A message specifically for the Kenyans. My message, because you are a peace ambassador. Yes, what I would like to, to share with my, with my country is that uh, let us not be selfish. Let's have humanity whereby we can share, not to steal from the, from the needy. And those who have factories or those who have uh, uh, companies, um, 
let's see how we can empower others so that they can come to, to, to a certain level whereby they cannot be um, they cannot be used by the wrong people uh, to steal and to my government uh, to see that the security uh, forces should be uh, reward given enough uh, uh, salary so that they can build their kids also to, in, to a certain uh, level that we need to be to have pride for this nation and make sure that our country stay at peace Thanks. and support sports persons. Thank you so much. Tekla, you are a wonderful person, a peace ambassador and a great, great, great athlete. It's been an absolute pleasure and honor to host you on our Living Legends segment tonight. Thank you very much. Let's have the fist shake. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On that note, I wind up the Living Legends interview segment with the barefoot running sensation Tegla Larupe. And before I rope in Topi Liambila for the latest in sports,